Welcome to Dobbin on Radio. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. We have our wonderful co-host on the show. As I said, now it's the first show of 2021. The date is 0301 2021. The first show, the first expression on the Candid Expression Sunday. But I'm sure my listeners are wondering, because I mentioned we have a bit of co-host on the show. We have two people on the show, or three altogether, including me. So I'll let the first person introduce themselves. So I'll let our guest, because we do have our, you know, in-house, should I say, co-host here as well. But I'll let the, 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 our guest, the first timer on the show, introduce herself. Uh, my name is Eniola Adeyemi. Fantastic. And it's lovely to be on the show for the first time tonight. Yes. This Thank is the, you for joining us. You're most welcome. Welcome to the show, uh, Any. I, I think I'm going to call you Any, uh, j- just for sure, on the show. Actually, I like the way Any sounds. But welcome to the show. Welcome to join us on Can Expression Sunday yeah. on Dubbin R Radio. And also, yeah. we have the one and only, oh my gosh, I'm not even going to say her name. Because when I say her name, she she just starts laughing. I don't want to start laughing to the, today. But it's a new year. But, no, 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 oh my gosh! Oh my year. gosh! It's, you know, she's the one. <laughs> the one and only. Please tell us, who do we have on the show as well? You know what? We have some listeners who actually enjoy the derived pleasure in the name, the way you introduce me. Oh my gosh! It's my. our relationship to sort of baby. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! The one and only. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you on the first expression, on Canada Expression Sunday, it's 1824-03-2021. It's a one and only relationship consultant for me! <laughs> Welcome to the show for me. Hey, Double Nine. Hey, Double Nine. And any happy new year. Thank you so happy much. New year. Happy new year. Happy new year. Awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. Welcome to the show. I'm looking forward to an exciting show today. As always, you know, it's, it's always a packed show. We always bring... Uh, great topics of discussion as well, and also get that interaction going uh, as well. But, Eddie, what are we talking about today? Uh, today we're talking about the igniting passion. Igniting wow. passion. Igniting the spark in our relationships, in our marriages. Reigniting passion. Fantastic. I'm excited. Fantastic. I mean, I love the way you said that, reigniting the passion, because passion is very important to relationships, you know. I mean, for me, you, you would know that, you know, we're always kind of encourage a healthy relationship? I mean, how important do you think passion is within a relationship? Or should we say, what is passion? Yeah, um, what is passion before we actually go for? Right, so for, we're going to probably, so we, you know, our, our guests or our listeners rather as well, you know, can follow us all through. There might be a bit of an interchangeable word, you know, between passion and spark every now and again. So we are, it's the one and the same thing that we're talking about, really. And that's kind of, you know, the... The, the attraction, the love, and, you know, the bond, really, that a couple shares um, uh, at the inception of their relationship and right through, to be honest. It should be constantly there, which we know is not the case, of course, hence the reason why, you know, we've decided to come to, to talk about this today. Reigniting the spark, it's important to keep the passion going, to keep... Whatever it is that got you guys attracted to one another in the first place, hopefully we're hoping that it wasn't just you know purely physical like beauty or whatever that can fade. There are other things beyond um, you know the physical that probably got co- couples um, very much interested and attracted in internal attraction. Really, I think that's what passion is. Mm. Um, it's an internal attraction to to your spouse or to your partner. Okay, that, that, fantastic. You, my take on that. fantastic. You're, you're quite right. I mean, just give a bit of a backdrop onto that as well. I mean, you know, as we know, we've, we've all been through this pandemic season, who, which has been uh, given a loss, you know, kind of uh, impact, uh, maybe negative, maybe positive, we don't know, on relationships within, you know, the household, because you're always there, you know, on, you know, in each other's face. How do you deal with that? The, the, does passion still stay or does it just uh, fade out? I mean, I want to bring any, any into this as well, because I know that, you know, recently uh, you were actually part of a panel uh, who talked about things around relationships. But, you know, in your opinion, um, what is passion in a relationship and how important is it? Uh, I will want to ask that to me and I, will, and I will say that passion is a strong emotion or a strong love, strong sexual desire that you feel towards your partner. So it, it, it is strong. It could be sexual, it could be romantic, emotional, 
feeling that you have towards your partner. And I think it's very, very important in relationships. Yeah, yeah. In, in marriage, it is, it is very important. And I think, like you said, uh, um, nine, 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 it's the pandemic sort of exposed many couples or many relationships or many, many marriages have lost that spark. Mm. They, they have lost the spark they had at the beginning and that was exposed during the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, it was exposed during the pandemic. You know, I mean, you know, the, the pandemic, it did bring some, um, say, positive notes or, 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 you know, where people could maybe uh, kind of like do a due diligence on their relationship and say, okay, is this real happening? Or it brought... The, the exposure out as you as you mentioned earlier exposing that okay there's actually no passion here you know um for me pa passion passion is very important in relationship as you as you mentioned as well and it's something that everyone should have but i mean this is not open question you know is, is it is it possible or is it normal should i say let me use the word normal uh, in inverted commas in this case to lose passion in a relationship, is, is, is it an abnormal thing? Or does everyone go through this phase uh, sometimes? I would say, I would say you would lose it completely. But it could dwindle. At the beginning, you are hot for each other. The sparks are there flying. Everybody sees it. It's, it's, it's really obvious. After a few years, some people, it begins to dwindle. But will it go completely if you truly love each other? No. I think, in my own opinion, it will not go completely if you truly love each other. If there's really love in the relationship or in the marriage, then it will not die out completely. Mm. It will, it may dwindle, but there will still be some left there. Okay. In my opinion. In your opinion. Fumi, what, what would you say to that? Our relationship consultant, Fumi, I'm sure has a different perspective or maybe similar perspective on this one. Well, actually, um, you know, Dobberdine, I, I totally lean towards what um, any any has said. That, um, and I think just to again hammer home what the definition is, you know, just to, to support what any said, it is a very strong. If we look at what a dictionary um, definition says, what passion is, is a very strong and barely controllable emotion. So, literally, um, we're talking about what we see at the very genesis of the relationship where, you know, you can barely get your hands off each other or stop talking to one mm -hmm. another. You kind of want to be around each other 24-7. So if we then try and look at the question you just asked, you know, is it normal? Mm. Um, I think, you know, you asked, you ask, is it possible and is it normal? I think both, yeah, you, the, the two, I would say, yes, it is possible to lose passion and it is normal as well, actually, because... Um, for so many factors, which I'm sure we'll, do, we'll delve into, we'll do, you know, delve into um, as we go on. But yes, it, it is very normal at some stages in that relationship, or at some point, it will appear that passion may have dwindled or can dwindle, just like um, any any has just said. Okay. You know, because it's just like it's 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 the intensity of love that you have, an expression of the intensity of love that you have for your partner, and so many factors can impact that intensity and mm. I guess we'll look at all of that as, as we go along. Yeah. So I yeah, think, just, just to answer yeah. um, your point. Yeah. Um, and to be fair, you know, just, just to add on <laughs> again, is a, a, a lot of, a lot of relationships, actually, I must say, when I did a bit of research, you know, just Googling and what have you, is it's just really sad that it, it's taking COVID to amplify the, the magnitude of the problem that we have. Mm. And so, in a way, as much as COVID is seen as a bad thing, I sincerely think that some supernatural force somewhere has um, caused this, you know, to be for this particular reason where, like you rightly said, to evaluate, reevaluate our relationships. Um, particularly marriages, you know, or even unions, and just reflect and see where we are and how we can get back, you know, to, to really where things originally were, where there was passion and um, there was, you know, uncontrollable um, emotion where you guys are just constantly can't wait to be in each, in each, other, in each other's face and faces, you know, all the time. But with COVID now, um, it's not safe, unfortunately. You have couples who can't even stand 
to be in each other's faces, and even pre-COVID, to be fair. Mm. Um, but we had other distractions to, um, to, to that didn't magnify the problem or that didn't allow people to face the problem okay you know, uh, and I, I, I love the point you were making and and the very sim- i love the point you're making and it's very similar uh to what any has said as well but i think mm. uh, maybe at this juncture we need to start looking at okay what, what are the challenges because the, the main thing we've identified now that's a- amplified um the lack of passion or uh, dwindling passion or loss of passion uh in a relationship is the pandemic yes it's normal even without the pandemic um, to lose passion in a relationship due to some um, factors, hopefully, uh, we will touch on before the end of the show. But should we start looking at, you know, reasons away from the pandemic first? We know the pandemic has actually amplified, you know, the the um, loss of passion between couples because you're always indoors, always together, you know, there's nowhere to go, there's nothing to do because, you know, you, you probably had some other activities uh, that you, you you would do or maybe just go out to get away from, from actually looking forward or trying to spend that quality time with your partner, but now nah, there's nowhere to go. So I, I think probably, should, should we kind of like look at some factors away from the pandemic, then come back on how the pandemic has well amplified, you know, the lack of passion within certain relationships. And maybe people can then do a, a, a kind of like self-assessment or relationship assessment and say, okay, are we are we are we in this category uh, that is being talked about on the radio today? But I want I want to go start with any and you know what do you think apart from the pandemic, are factors that could cause a passion being you know dwindling away or just going away from a relationship? I want to start with um, lack of communication. I think that is vitally important in marriages and relationships. You should be able to talk. When you stop talking to your partner or to your spouse, that is the beginning of it. Wanting to know how their day was. Talking about everything and anything. Talking is important. You have to be able to communicate. When you are happy, talk. When you are angry, talk. When you are sad, talk. Talking is important. You have to be able to communicate with your partner. When you stop doing that consi- consistently, then you are beginning to lose passion. Mm. I think that's for me, that is the first and, and I think one what, of what, what, what the most important things. Forgetting to flirt with each other. At the beginning of the relationship, just like um, Fumi said, you can't get your hands off each other. You are hitting each other, kissing each other, taking each other, holding your neck, cuddling. When you stop doing those things, that's part of the things that help to, to keep that fire burning. But when you, be, when you begin to stop doing this, you spend the whole day without touching each other at all. Then you know that there's, there's a problem somewhere. Living in the morning, giving your husband your, or your, your, your husband or your wife a peck on the cheek and saying goodbye or, 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 or a kiss, have a, have, have a nice day, giving a hug, giving a cuddle, when you stop doing those things, when you stop flirting with each other. Then there's a problem. Mm. Mm. I, I think also as well, having completely separate hobbies. Mm. It's important that you share something. In, you, have, you have, even if it is just one thing, have something in common. That is very vital. When, when we first got married, it was just the two of us at home. Am I, am I allowed to share this example? Of course. And my husband is he's, he's a footballer. He loves football. Even before we, we moved to the UK, and during the season, then. Um, he will, he will leave the house and go and watch with his friends. And so one day I just got tired of being left alone in the house. And, and I just said, then I was expecting my first. I said, okay, tonight we're going together. So I used to, I said, yes, we're going to, it's football, we're going together. So put on my slippers, got my wraps, put around my shoulders. And we went to his friends. We knocked on the door. And as I entered, all the men, they just looked at me. What is she doing here? Right. <laughs> and it said, she said she wants to watch football. Quickly, they, they made it for me on the sofa. I was the only woman in the room. And I sat there and I watched football with him. Rather than stay home and talk and feel, and feel miserable, I chose to go with him and enjoy his passion. Mm. That is his passion. And so I got to love football. So it, it's important that you, you, you have at least one thing in common, have a hobby in common. It doesn't have to be the wife loving the husband or hobby. The husband could as well love the wife's hobby as well. If your lo- wife loves cooking, just standing around her in the kitchen alone. 
Even if you are not helping her with chopping up vegetables or just being around her in the kitchen while she does the cooking, mm. or if your, child, or your if your wife loves singing, watching those musical videos with her alone, it's important that we, that we both both of you share something in common, share a hobby. Fantastic. That is important. That keeps the fire burning. It keeps it keeps the passion and the love alive all through. Mm. I mean, you know, the, the also, oh, sorry, sorry, Karen, sorry to interrupt you. Sorry. We shouldn't forget to make each other laugh. There are persons who can be together in the living room for five, six hours, and they will not even say a word or even share a joke. Mm. It's important that we are able to make each other laugh, make each other laugh. Laughter heals the soul; it cures the soul. So it's important that we laugh together. We share jokes. Yeah. Say it, share, laugh about everything or anything. That's very important. Very, very important. Okay, I mean, I, I love that. You know, the, the high level things you mentioned there was communication, you know, learn to share a hobby together and also love. I mean, I think they're very vital to ensuring that the, the flames of passion are still burning uh, within that relationship because it gives you the opportunity to understand uh, where your spouse is, uh, you know, uh, head is at as well because you can't read their mind. You know, so communication is very vital and sharing a hobby and laughter. But I will come back uh, to th this point because, you know, there's some other questions, you know, that just popped out to me, you know, when you were describing that. But before I actually go there, I would like, you know, our relationship consultant Fumi to give us her perspective on this one. To be fair, um, double nine, I it probably would sound like I'm just agreeing with any today, but I mean, that's amazing. Right it's it's a like new year. Always, wow. I'm not always <laughs> I'm not always agreeing with people to be fair. Yes. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, this one I, I do have to agree. I think the center uh, the center the centerpiece or the the um nucleus or the, the centerpiece of any any relationship really it should be communication. Everything else draws from that source. Where there is clear line of communication, expectations are well managed. Because I think that's one of the problems that causes um, passion um, to kind of evaporate or you know um, simmer down in relationships. When when you've gone in, obviously as boyfriend and girlfriend, everything is looking hunky dory. You're not living with one another, and they're looking like they're you know the the, the, the partner is looking like 100% to you, but until you start living together and then you start seeing each other's excesses mm. um, that you never actually um, saw because you were not married um, or even because you were so much in love. And this is probably a lesson for those who are not married yet, um, you know, or not in a long-term relationship is to have some tough conversations, you know, what seems like difficult conversations and questions because it's these things that helps you to really kind of get um, an understanding of who you're about to commit to. And so where these dialogues have not been had and then couples go into a relationship, they're in each other's spaces more than they would have been as boyfriend and girlfriend, yeah. um, <laughs> expectations start getting dashed, you know. And so for me, that, again, communication, it, it stems from it. And it just kind of, it's a, it has a dominant effect on other areas. So... If you don't communicate about what you expect from me, um, you know, you want me to, you, you like having sex three times a day and, you know, you haven't kind of like, you know, sought my view on that. And I'm kind of like, no, I think I'm a scheduler kind of a woman, you know, you need to kind of, so all of these things, managing expectations, you know, when you communicate, you also manage expectations very well, you know, or your partner, you suddenly start losing, you know, you have women who were uh, stay mama or stay things or whatever they are. Um, before they got married, and all of a sudden they have turned into something else, mm. you know, and the husband does not communicate it, um, and he's a bit disappointed because he's thinking, this is not what I married, you know, but there should be a place where he's honest with her and say, babe, I would really like you to, you know, to, to do your hair monthly or give her money, whatever it is, you know, communicate what he wants or his wishes, and likewise the woman as well, maybe your husband or your partner is beginning to have a pot, pot belly, and you're not finding him sexually attractive anymore, or the sex is not good, you know, you should be able to communicate. So again, just to buttress what Annie has said, everything centers around communication. When okay. there's lack of communication, everything sort of goes left. Fantastic. I mean, I think you've made a very valid point. And, I, you know, and communication is one thing I actually want to dive into more, because I think yeah, it is important. And also you mentioned about uh, managing expectations. But, you know, with, mm. it, with, with communication, you know, there seems to be 
some uh, issues around that and all the you know that we have influences maybe outside influences uh, things around you know the the type of individual uh, are they communicator you know are there other ways mm-hmm. you can communicate you know and also we look at the things around the the, the upbringing of, of, of the individual i mean that in its and so it's, it's, it's like a huge topic um but i think mm-hmm. i will look at it from the angle of communication first so you, you mentioned something about you know um, if you if you feel that your um, uh, partner is 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 um, kind of like putting on some weight or is, is is you know or maybe you you there's something you think okay no I mean that this needs to change, but because your partner has this mentality of respect of saying that you know if you tell me this that means you're disrespecting me or likewise, you know the women get a bit upset if you tell them about the you know, wait. So how do we address this communication issue? You know, which is something that has been instilled in them. But because as, as we mentioned as well, communication is very important to passion. So the passion is disappearing due to a fact of something that's occurring but not being addressed. But people kind of find it hard to actually address that issue because of the modes of communication. What would you advise? Mm. Is, is that to me, double nine? Yes. Yeah, great. Um, again, to be honest, um, you, you, make, you make a very valid point there that oftentimes, you know, I mean, generally we are, we are a product of our upbringing and, um, you know, what we're exposed to, whether it be tradition, whether it be, you know, religion, whatever it is that, you know, makes us who we are. Um, and of course, you know, you've, you've developed a pattern or a habit or your personality over a very long period of time. And all of a sudden you have to kind of mesh it um, with somebody else, you know, in, in adulthood. So it's not something that I think, is, first of all, it's important to understand as um, as a partner that, you know, when it comes to communicating, the way you communicate is important. Right. Because we will always perceive or digest um, information um, differently. And so for that reason, we've got to be conscious in the ways that we communicate. So I gave an example where um, a woman, for instance, was a slave queen or whatever she is, she was on point before she got married or got into a long-term relationship. And, you know, the husband turns around and says, I was this now, why are you tying my power around the house or why are you got yeah. hair it on the, you know, if he does it in a harsh way, it can be quite um, deflating. It, so really, communication, when you're communicating, it should come from a place of love. You should always have love at, also at the center of your communication. So that means that when you want to communicate, um, process how, you know, it's very likely for the recipient to receive it. And again, be open enough if the recipient has missed interpreted what you've communicated you should be prepared to also um take responsibility for that whether you see it wrongly or rightly be prepared to take responsibility to say well i'm sorry that's not how i meant it so again there should be a place of um you know forgiving uh not forgiving to be able to apologize right yeah. um to your partner if you've okay. miscommunicated um, to them Fantastic. i want to bring in any there as well because any you, you mentioned something about when your uh, husband you know he loved football and you wanted to share that hobby with him you know and you, just, you said to him you know what i'm going with you to your football place today to watch football you know some individuals might take that as why you know does he not trust me why is he trying to follow me uh, to where i'm going to watch football I mean, how did you communicate that across to make it seem like, you know, you're actually genuinely interested in his hobby, not trying to find out if it's maybe going to where he says he's going? Uh, to start with double nine, I knew where he was going. I, I, and I knew those who he was football with. That's the first thing. I knew he was always there. It wasn't as if I, I had any doubts or suspicions about where he was going, what, what he was truly doing. And I... I, I I was brought up in a house where we talk. Mm. We talk a lot. That's my upbringing. We talk a lot. And I brought that into my marriage. I much more than him. And so at the beginning, it was a bit tricky because I needed to adjust how much I communicated at the beginning. Yeah. Because he, he wasn't used to that kind of 
I, I'm, I'm full on. <laughs> and so I, I have to tone it down a little bit. Right. For, for him to get used to even the talk at all. Because he, he didn't come from that kind of background. Mm. Just like Tony said, we come from different ba- backgrounds. Individually, we have different personalities. And so that has to be put in context when it comes to communication. Mm. Wow. Or wow. If, 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 if we don't put that in context, then we won't communicate appropriately or, or properly. By the time you get used to your spouse, I think for me then it was just direct. I just said, you know what, my dear, instead of being home alone, let's go together tonight. Let's just go together. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. If I don't enjoy it, I will tell you. And I went and it was fun. All the screaming and the shouting and, and, I, and I got used to it. I was very regular big store there when, when it came to watching um, UFA with the men. And so I, I, I developed that interest in, in football. I wanted to ask what Pumi said about the approach and manner in which he communicates. I'm reading a book now, and in the book, this term was used. You can be right, but wrong at the top of your voice. Mm. Mm. You can be right, but wrong at the top of your voice, which means you can actually be saying the right thing, mm-hmm. but the manner and approach in which you communicate what you are saying can be wrong. Yes. Mm. And so it's important that both of us, the husband and the wife, when we are communicating, think about the manner and approach in which you want to say what you want to say. Uh, so the other person receives the communication, receives what we are saying, the way we want him to receive it. Because if you don't communicate it appropriately, they, they, they will not even hear. Mm. They, they will not even hear. And we may truly, really be right in what we are saying. But because they are not said in the correct manner, then he or she will not even listen at all. Fantastic. And so they haven't communicated. So the manner and approach in which we deliver our messages is important, whether verbally or otherwise. It's important the manner and approach. But the other person receives the message you want them to receive. Exactly okay. what... Okay, I, I mean, I love that. I just just before I um come back to that again, I just want to read a comment uh, from one of our listeners. Uh, this is Elizabeth in Kent, uh, who says that uh, yes, um, that some men don't like uh, the women being part of the uh, football uh, watching season because they might uh, think that the woman, the wife, is insecure. I mean, what do you say to that? That mm. means. No, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. It's impossible for the man to, to, to feel the woman is insecure. If you don't have a good relationship at, at the onset, if you, have, if you have a good relationship with your spouse, then he wouldn't feel that you are insecure. Mm. But that is a possibility. Mm. The, man, the, the man could think, oh, she wants to come and spy. Mm. Mm. Why does she want to come? Does she think I'm lying? If that's the possibility for them. I think you have a relationship with with, 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 with with your spouse, a loving and a trusting relationship. Mm. Then I guess that will not be the case. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I mean, I agree. I agree with. I agree with that. I was just coming to say that it all um, depends on the foundation in which the relationship is built on. To be fair, you know, if if there if there isn't a genuine friendship between the, the partners then it can be perceived that way. Um, it could also be perhaps maybe um, some unfortunate incident has occurred during the course of their relationship that has perhaps breached the trust as well, um, which is a reflection of lack of trust. And, um, you know, it can be perceived that way. If it is, it can be a problem for the guy as well. You know, it can be embarrassing on his part as well. You know, his friends seeing his woman, um, with him at wherever they are. But if they do have, just like Annie has said, if they do have a genuine friendship, you know, it doesn't really matter what other people think. It's about what they think. And they are, to them, they're building, you know, memories. They're having fun and sharing in, in one another's interests. OK, which is very important, as you mentioned earlier, that, you know, communication is very key. And also we just highlighted, you know, that communication is important, but the way you communicate as well, is quite uh, important as well because you know as, as any mentioned you can be right but communicating in a wrong manner which you know deceives the uh, uh, you know the, the, the process or what, what you want to actually even uh, communicate to your partner as well okay there's one thing I actually mentioned earlier which was um, 
about upbringing and you know what effects it can have on, on relationships. So now I want to I want to go into the pandemic uh, effects on relationships because we just highlighted quite well. Uh, w- without the pandemic, you know what other factors can uh, cause uh, you know the passion or the spark to actually dwindle uh, in a relationship. So lack of communication is, uh, is one of them. Not sharing a hobby and not actually having that joke time or being able to laugh together uh, can be you know one of the you know some of the factors that could. Uh, cause uh, the passion to actually uh, dwindle and eventually disappear but now we find ourselves you know in a pandemic where it's all you know locked in you're locked in with each other every day you're seeing each other every day it's like oh my gosh how are you gonna deal with this um, you know process so now i want to talk about the, the, the cultures i want to talk about for instance is like um i mean I, i'm trying not to go a bit religious uh, here but i'll just keep it a bit neutral so we have, you know, a husband and, and, and wife or partners living together. And normally uh, the wife does all the cooking in the house um, and the man is always off to work and back and forth. So, but now the pandemic is here now, just as an example, the pandemic is here now. And um, the, the wife feels, oh my gosh, you know, uh, darling, I need, I need to help me cook dinner for the, for the day or for the evening or something. But he says no. My my father never told me, uh, or, ne- or never, or my wife, my, sorry, my mother never told my, uh, wife, my my mother to cook. Why should I cook for you? Because of that upbringing. But with that, now the lady has communicated. I'm having a bit of feedback from you, uh, 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 for me. Uh, I don't know. It's come back again. Sorry. So the, the 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 woman has communicated what she wants. She she feels like you know I, I'm a bit tired today. I've communicated to my husband. To say, all right, listen, I need you to help me out with the cooking this evening. But he comes back and says, uh, no, I can't do that because my father never cooked in the house when I was there. So cool. how does she ha- handle that? Because now she's going to be upset and that's going to brew into something. I'm, I'm giving an example from the female perspective. I will come back to the male perspective as well. So to any, I would ask you that question. Because you mentioned communication is very important. So the wife has communicated to the husband and says, listen, darling, I'm a bit tired today. And remember, this is a pandemic. They can't go anywhere. How do you how do you resolve that issue? Just like you, uh, you rightly said, you mean, I think we mentioned it as well. Because we, uh, double nine, sorry. Uh, we, we come from different back, backgrounds. And the experiences as we grew up has already formed who we are. And for many of us, we find it because we detach, detach ourselves from those experiences. For example, I have friends who grew up in homes where their mothers did all the shopping, their mothers did all the cooking, their fathers were never around the kitchen for any reason at all. Okay. And so for men who grew up in such, in such homes, that mentality is with them. Mm. That a man is, a man's place is not in the kitchen. Because they have never seen their fathers or their uncles or their the male role models in their family go near the kitchen for any reason. So they have it in their mentality or their like men don't go near the kitchen. So if that kind of man is married to a woman who one day says, Oh my dear, I'm really sad this reason. Can you please help me in the kitchen? Of course his first response will be, Are you okay? Men don't go near the kitchen. I sorry, I can't cook. If you can't cook well, that's the end. and then it becomes a big row. I think it's important for all when we come into a relationship or come into marriage, know that we're two people from different backgrounds. And it's important that the things we have learned growing up, Hmm. that we learn some of those things for the sake of happiness in our marriages. Hmm. If a man in this century says it's a woman's place to be in the kitchen and he has no place to be in the kitchen, I will be shocked. I know, I know for me it's going to come in, but before, before me, before you actually say anything, I want, I want to, there's a comment that just come in, and this is from a, from a lady. Uh, she, she says, you know, have you had that type of relationship before? Has he been, has he been encouraged to come in, into the kitchen with you before the pandemic? If, if that's not the case, uh, sorry, her name is Bimbo um, from London, I presume. Uh, she says, if, it, if that's not the case, how do you expect things to turn around just like that? So there's a different perspective from another woman. Mm. So what we should... I, I agree. I'm sorry, double nine. If 
before the pandemic, he hasn't come out the kitchen before. Of course, you you will look a bit. Um, I don't want to use the word. If you ask him to come to the kitchen in the pandemic, you've been married for 10 years and he hasn't come near the kitchen at all. You asking him to come in, in, into the kitchen, he will be shocked. He will be shocked. But I think that, that there's an adage um, where we come from that um, as you want the later days to be, at the beginning of the journey, let the person know. If you've been married for the first year and you haven't said anything at all and you don't encourage him to come and help you in the kitchen and you don't say anything about it, you let it slide the first year, second year, fifth year, tenth year, and they suddenly want him to come into the kitchen. No, that won't happen. So I encourage those who are new in relationship, new into your wedlock, please, whatever you, or your expectations are, make it known at the beginning. Mm. Mm. It's important that you make it known at the beginning. Don't leave him and then wake up 10 years later and say, oh, he doesn't help in the kitchen. At the beginning, the first month and the second month, did you encourage him to come at all? If you haven't been doing that, then you can't ask him to come into the kitchen the 10th year of your marriage. He won't. Uh, so I think, I think, on learning the things that we have learned that will not make our marriage work is vital in our marriage relationship. Because if you don't unlearn some of those things, then there will be issues. And I think, uh, uh, secondly, the way you communicate um, your request is, is another thing. Mm. Communication again. Yeah. Yeah. Don't hold. Please wait. Hello? Sorry about that. Carry on, yes. Yeah. I think the way we communicate the, the request is important as well. If you say it in a way as if you are um, commanding him, your response will be no. So I think communicating the mm. request in the kitchen is important as well. The way and manner in which you communicate it. Fantastic, fantastic. That's I, vital as well. I mean, I, I, I can hear, you know, Fumi sighing and, ooh, ha, ah, ooh, ha, ah, ah. You know, I, I want to I I bring you in. I want to hear your perspective on this Oh, one. my God. It's these kind of topics that just, you know, gets under my skin, to be honest. Um, you've been placed on hold. My Please God, wait. what is happening here? This is technology. Oh, my, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry about that. I think we, we, hello, I think we've... Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Sorry about that. I think we've now rectified that issue. Shouldn't it happen again. So, oh, right, okay. Yes. Sorry, I was saying that it's topics or conversations like this that really kind of gets to me. Um, do I agree with what Amy has said? Um, to a large extent, um, because, again, it still borders around the whole communication um, issue, right? And so I'm going to just try and take it in pieces because obviously you read out a, a comment as well from one of the listeners, um, you know, from the, the question that you originally posed. Yeah. So where um, a man who grew up, you know, in an environment where predominantly women had a stereotypical role or traditional role, oh. um, you know, and he wants to bring that into his relationship in this day and age, um, no doubt, I think I said it earlier on, that we are, we are you know, a, a product of our upbringing. And, of course, the people who raised us, the time and era when they were, is totally different from the times that we are in. So do I agree with um, any on the need for some of our women and men to, to unlearn and relearn for the benefit of the fact that dispensation is very different, right? So the dispensation of when they were raised to the time when they are now, um, you know, building their own family and invariably raising children as well who will pick up what they are seeing, what they're seeing as well, you know, and we don't really kind of want to pass on um, generational um, challenges. That's, that's the way I'm going to put it, actually. Um, so for me... And I think it just kind of brings um, the the story of Tyrese that I read during during the week um, on you made a very profound um, statement that can how can you really be um, something that you never saw growing up, mm. right? And if you flip it other way around, it means that you can only be what you saw growing up, essentially. So if he saw his mom being in the kitchen constantly, the father is just lazing about watching football or whatever it is. That's probably his expectation from his woman. And so we need to have a dialogue. Um, if we didn't do it before we got married and we are in that relationship now, I think it's never too late to have a dialogue and to realign 
um, expectations in the relationship because um, and it's not just the example that you gave you know because on, on the man's side even on the woman she may have grown up in a home where her father was very hands-on so her perception of what the husband should be is that men are hands-on whereas the man grew up in a household where the woman does everything and the man lazes around so already you can see um, a, a clash right there and there and so we cannot work based on the model of our parents our parents relationship that model we can't model that we have to be able to remodel our own so i think it's been open enough um to want to remodel our own marriages to suit the times that we're in to also suit the jurisdictions that we're in as well so it's not just the time but the place where we are you know some places like for instance in africa in nigeria even if that man wanted to have that kind of mentality, perhaps maybe they have um, the luxury of, you know, house help and support, but, uh, you know, child care and everything. But where you expect, so you're in the UK, for instance, and child care is uh, times five or times six of what you probably would get elsewhere. Mm. Um, and you want the woman to um, be doing everything whilst, you know, you don't want to enter into the kitchen um, pre COVID and even during COVID, um, you know, w- there's going to be a challenge. And I don't even have a problem personally. If he, if he wasn't entering the kitchen pre-COVID, but he was entering the bathroom and he was entering the laundry room and he was entering some other places, that's not a problem. You know, because I, if I remember very clearly that, you know, my pastor would normally say, then I come and ask him to wash plates. Oh, you want to kill him. Well, ask him to iron the whole of the house, a room full of clothes, he would do it. So meaning that your partner may have strengths in places. So where their weaknesses are, you guys need to find a way to communicate and balance the skill there. It is where, it, where it becomes a challenge or a problem is when it's imbalanced, where it's one party that is doing the most or that is doing more. Um, that's where I think, you know, and I, I want to believe that's the, that's the angle that we're looking at it from. But if we're looking at it in isolation, that, oh, he doesn't enter the kitchen and what have you. Yeah, he may not enter the kitchen, but he does other things in the house. There's no problem with that. It's what work for your home, each to its own, right? Um, but I wouldn't want to sit on the radio and say, oh, that's bad if he doesn't enter the kitchen or if he must enter. No, it, it doesn't. He, he must not enter the kitchen if he does, if he supports you in other places, mm. right? Um, so that's just the answer to the, the question of um, also what the, the listener said about if he wasn't doing it before COVID. But where is the place of love? Is the question okay? Because genuinely, if you love let's, somebody, let's, let's take a quick you break. Know. Let's take a quick break. Yeah, go. And we can be. Okay. I will be back right back. And hold that thought because that's very important. Hold that thought. Mm. I'll be back. So stay locked on. Stay locked in. It's your host Dob and I with our amazing co-host today, Fumi and Emmy on Canada Express in Sunday, talking about reigniting the passion. Stay locked on. Stay locked in. Catch us back on the other side. Amazing co-host Emmy and Fumi. On the show today, the first one of 2021, we're talking about reigniting the passion within relationships. Hope you're having a look, great time on the show. I am. What we've done, we've done a bit of like, you know, highlighting some factors. So we look at factors uh, pre the pandemic and also within the pandemic. But all in all, communication has been the number one, you know, thing that has been highlighted that should be important in keeping the passion going. Uh, within a relationship and also sharing a hobby share a hobby together and also a laugh learn to laugh together learn to have a joke but what before we went on the break we're talking about communication uh, around when a woman shares what she wants but because of uh, things around the cultural or the background of the husband in this case kind of like uh, interferes with how he responds to the communicating Women. So before the break as well, for me, you, you mentioned where is the love? Where is the love? Mm. Because you say the, the background as well should not uh, be a hindering factor because you should be able to learn and unlearn so you can adapt to the current times. Absolutely. And any said, said that is the way you communicate. But you mentioned where mm. is the love? Tell us, so where is the love in this? Absolutely. So, I mean, where I was going with that thought, um, Double Nine, is your woman 
or man, because, again, I don't want to be gender biased, but, you know, if if I'm going to talk from the African perspective anyway, as I am one, it is often quite gender biased, which is where it's the woman that carries the majority. There's this expectation uh, and a lot of, you know, weight on the woman that this is what she should be, forgetting that at the same time she goes to work nine to five, just like he does, or she's got to dial in work from her equally as well, but she's equally expected to still carry on juggling, um, this pre-assigned duties to her while, um, you know, the man just kind of sits there and, it, it, you know, he's all right with him. I, I personally feel a man who is comfortable to allow his woman, uh, and please, like I said, it, it, there can be a reverse of this, you know, it's not very common, but there can be a reverse where the woman is just the one that is a layabout and the guy is the, very much hands-on and the woman doesn't do anything. But in most cases, it's not. Um, it is the woman who do, tries to juggle everything. Motherhood, you know, working, running a business, still trying to feed everybody, do everything. Be the cleaner, the cook, the washman, the teacher, everything all at once. And, at least, and still need to go into the other room, like Mr. Buhari would say, and to still fulfill those duties too, all at the same time. <laughs> now, I personally feel that a man who could sit there, your wife, first of all, is not your slave, right? She was not handed over to you to come and um, be your slave. You guys are meant to be catering to one another, right? You cater to her needs and she caters to yours. Now, she's not your, she's not your slave. At the end of the day, you use her anyhow, she looks anyhow. You understand? Because she ends up looking raggedy because she cannot find a balance. So the point is, a man who can sit there, when I mean where is the love, is genuinely, if you love your wife, you kind of want to uplift some of these burdens or these... Um, this weight of her if you care about your wife enough. And for me, I, I see it as a man, you know, if you don't help me out, um, you don't love me. You do just don't love me. How can you love me and watch me, you know, lift all this weight by myself, right? And so that was where I was going with that thought of where is the love. Forget tradition, forget all this cultural business. We, especially for us in the U.K., yeah, and then you hear somebody, you hear, oh, you're not even allowed to be telling your husband what to be doing. And I know that was what, um, Sister Annie, you mentioned about communication. I agree mm-hmm. in terms of how you communicate. Um, so this is probably for a man who is useful um, mm-hmm. in other areas in the house and albeit not the kitchen. And so during the lockdown, um, you require his assistance in the kitchen, which is mostly where you, that's your domain. How you communicate to that man to say, oh, babe, please, can you help me out with maybe slicing the yam or trying to help out with lunch today? I think in that context, it's understandable because he is, um, you know, he's useful and he's helpful in other areas in the house. But a man that is not useful at all and he expects the woman to be the one that will wash the bathroom, cook, clean, help the children and everything, and you're telling me that is how you communicate to him again, I'm sorry, I think he's lost that privilege. If you're needing to be finding a way to be communicated, he's not a baby. You did not marry a baby. I mean, this is a man you, that you're meant to submit you know to. What? Spiritually, yeah. is meant to be your headship. Yeah. And I think there's been a bit of a misconception, particularly in African homes, okay. on what submission is. Uh, submission okay. is not that you become a fool. You, you know, you... Uh, anyway, yes. let me not yes. go too yeah. deep. Yeah. But yeah. yes, yeah. Um, we, we're going to come to that. Nine, sub- that's my place <laughs> at the moment. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll, come <laughs> to, I'll come back to you shortly. I'll come back to you shortly. But I just want to read uh, another comment uh, from a woman as well. You know, same thing, but I, I hope you just call in as well. She says, women, ha- w- women also have to learn on how to approach. How you approach him as well is very important. Uh, communication or communicate this to the men it's, and she says some men are naturally you know or you know or don't see the woman pulling the weight because that's the way they've been brought up you know that's what she says doesn't doesn't make it acceptable just no, because it's been no, it's, it's the way no, you've been brought but, up i've been brought up in a particular way as well and that's what marriage is that's what relationship is it's about compromises it's about unlearning certain things that you saw that perhaps worked in a dispensation or in an era that you're not in so it's, and this is the reason why Motorola, Nokia, and the likes of them are no longer relevant. Because you know what? They did not get with the times that we're in. This is why iPhone 11 and 12 Pro and all what have you is, is trending. Yes, but because I Because they I, understand I, the times that we're in. So in our relationships as well, we need to understand and adapt to the times that we're in. 100%. Prior to lockdown, you know, the way we probably did things in our homes would have been different. But with lockdown now, 
we have to also adapt to the times that we're in. Mm, mm. You're quite right. You're quite right. But I want us to be uh, balanced on this case because we seem to be leaning uh, to one side where we, we, oh, we, we, we're kind of talking about what the woman does. Yes, we know the woman is doing a lot as well. But I mean, I think maybe Bimbo has a, a bit of um, a point here, you know, when she says, some men, I'm not saying, you know, Dobbina is not like that. I don't know. Dobbina is, is amazing, I think. You know, he says some men naturally, uh, 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 you know, generally don't see that the woman is pulling the weight. But now I want to come to any, because now I remember on the on the show, which I listened to, uh, you know, you talking on the, uh, the seminar you recently uh, held. And when a, a question uh, was posed uh, to one of your uh, the panelists uh, regards a submission, you know, I want to understand because the woman said a, a woman must submit to a man. Does submission contribute or deflate the passion in a relationship? Um, but, but, uh, double nine. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a Christian and the Bible commands us wives. Oh, the Bible says, this is a fire topic. Love your yes. wife and wives submit to your husband. Submission should not be an issue. It shouldn't dampen or put out the fire of passion. It shouldn't. In a loving relationship where the man is loving, it is very easy for the woman to submit. But, you know, you just put a caveat to what you just said. Sorry, yes. Sister Annie, you've just actually, uh, um, I wouldn't say contradict yourself a little bit. Uh, and I know, um, you know, from what you're essentially saying is that submission should not be conditional. Um, but if you're saying if you're saying that, that the Bible commands women to be submissive, whether the guy's smashing your head into the wall or not, or he's, tra you know, trampling on you like crap, you still continue to submit, which is not the case, because you've just also said in a loving relationship, meaning that the man is fulfilling his part of the, of, the, of, the, of the requirement that where he loves his wife, it makes it easy for that woman to submit to him. How do you then balance that skill where a man that does not love you or does not express the love that has been commanded unto him, how, do you, how, how can you submit to such a man? I still maintain the fact that our submission is not, con is not conditional. It's not based, the, 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 the Bible doesn't say, why love your, uh, why love your husband? Uh, well, sorry, wives submit to your husband when they love you. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says husbands love, wives submit. If they are not dependent on each other. Husbands are supposed to love even wives who are not submissive. And they are supposed to submit to husbands even who are not loving. But I said it is easier. The man loving you makes it easier for you to submit to him. If, he's not, if you don't see his love, then it becomes a challenge for you to submit, but the Bible still expects us to submit. I wouldn't say in a, in a relationship where he's abusing you physically. Mm. Then that's a different bargaining time. What about emotionally? What about, what about, yes. what about because I think that way. Think that way. Okay. You won't wait there and be bastard, isn't it? You won't no, be but that's, there but that's the thing. Bastard. That's the thing. That's, that, you, that's yeah. tangible, where you, physical. What, what about emotional abuse? What about psychological abuse? Financial abuse? The ones that are not tangible that you can actually, you know, see on the person. What would you say in that context? I think the woman in that situation will then need the help of the Holy Spirit to submit to the man. Because it will, not oh. one on your own, you will not be able to do it. Be, because... With your own strength, you will not be able to. Mm. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will make it easier for you to submit to Him. And then you prayerfully take that man to God. Just the, just the Holy Spirit alone, or maybe counseling, or no? Yes, yes. in addition to all of, all of that, of course, counseling, you will, you will seek help, isn't it? You, as a woman, will seek help, or both of you, as, as, as a couple, will seek, seek help and then look, look up to God in prayer. Mm. I mean, you know, I, I must come. I must come in a, a bit here. You know, I I understand. Uh, the, the you know, as you mentioned in the Bible, it says a woman should submit uh, to a man. And in your in your description as well, um, if the man loves you, it actually makes it easier to submit. So the submission is not conditional. Uh, you know, it's just it just it's just the order to submit. I I do get that, but also we have to look at other factors uh, within today's society that could say maybe that submission 
should be um, dependent on some factors. Are we going against the word of God if we say that? Should we should, should we say it should, should be dependent on some certain aspects? Uh, because again, we, 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 we can't rewrite the Bible. No, no, we, we're, we're not. We're not. We're not. And, and the I just, word of God is clear. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Write the Bible. I'm not it disputing that. It's not conditional. They, they, they are not. He, loving is not conditional. Loving is not based on how submitting. Submitting is not. It's not based on him loving. They are not. But, but then, when you, sorry, sorry, what we need to do is easier for us to submit, and it's easy for for him to love. Can I can I share something? I know a couple who have been been through challenging times in the last one or two years, and. Recently, the woman just sort of, I think, probably realized that she she's doing something wrong, and she's now started, started taking steps to sort of redress what she's been doing before. In less than a month of her turning a new leaf, let me say it that way, without anybody telling the man, without anybody talking to the man, he started doing the things that she wanted. Without anybody talking to him, he's just her changing her approach to things. And without anybody telling the man, he too is doing what she wants him to do. So it's important that both of us, not just the man alone, not just the woman alone, we both do as the Bible has specified. Husbands love, women submit. When we both see the husbands, they they desire that, they desire that submission. That's, that's the way God has ordained it. And when we women submit, for them as well, it is easy for them to love us. But women who, who, who wants to throw her waist around as well, Bible calls them the head of the house. They, they are the head of the home. The responsibility is on their shoulders. As Christ is above the church, they are the head of the home. Mm. If we as women know our place as well in that, in that relationship. So where is the place? Just out of interest. <laughs> when you mean, <laughs> I, 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 think, I would really you know, love to know, you know I, I mean, where I, the I place is. Just, just the because, because the, head, the, head head of our, the head of our marriage is, is our husband. They are the head of the home. I'm not disputing that, but so it's I just, can, like, can we, sorry, can we use you, maybe the anatomy yeah. for a second, right? Can we use anatomy for a second, which is um, the human anatomy? There, there is no head where there is no neck. The head cannot stand on its own, right? Yes, Just to try and bring things to context. Yes, that's one. That's agree. one. So, secondly, the head equally cannot do anything in terms of making any form of maneuver without the neck. Therefore, you know, if we then go back to the creation of man a little bit, and I'm sorry that we're delving a little bit into theology at this point, when God wanted to take or wanted to create women, he went, for me, I, I feel, anyway, we may have different um, interpretations, but the mere fact that he did not go and take the woman from the, 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 the ear, he didn't take her from the leg, he didn't take her, you know, he took from the rib, from his side, which is, for me, a demonstration as though, even though he may be the head of the house, we are equal, we are one and the same. We have become one. So one is not, you know, higher than the other. It is a partnership. And I think this is where a lot of challenges are in relationship, where ultimately everybody should be respected. And our, uh, um, uh, uh, our means of respect or interpretation of respect varies, perhaps from gender to gender. So the way a man would interpret respect may be different from a woman would interpret respect. Very valid point. The way a woman would interpret the respect is perhaps maybe where the guy loves her. He loves her enough not to disrespect her. He loves her enough to take her views into consideration. He loves her enough. Again, it's, it comes back again to what, the, what God has commanded these men to do. Likewise, the woman. Okay. So I know this is not a theology class or anything like that, but I, I think where the misconception is, is using um, the dictionary, the dictionary definition of submission, because when you look at there's two different definitions to submission, right? They, they, they're using a dictionary definition for a spiritual um, order is where there's a bit of a misconception until... Um, <laughs> Okay, let, let me drop it there for a second. Okay, you, sorry, we carry our, on. I think we have our first caller. <laughs> oh, we lost lots. Can you call back? The phone lines are open. It's 074-956-36899. That's 
0749563689. Again, the number is 0749563689. You can actually download the app as well that you can call directly uh, from the app. So I just lost that call. You can call back. I mean, I mean, it, the the points uh, you you both make. Um, I think the, 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 they're both valid, but we just need to um, understand. You know, my initial question was: Does submission contribute to the passion in a relationship? But Eddie said it's, it's it should be unconditional. But you know, Fumi says you know it's it's not it's not it's not that because we have a lot to do. because um, there are certain things tied uh, to. A woman submitting to a man, uh, but the phone lines are open as I mentioned earlier. It's 074-956-3689. That's 074-956-3689. Or just download the app and you can call us uh, directly uh, from the app as well. It's subjective, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know. I want to. I want to hear from our listeners. I want to hear what they think. You know, um, on on this on this note. But is so? Are we saying? Being submissive to your husband doesn't have any effect on any. Again, so are we saying Pat? You know, submissiveness have no has no correlation or has no connection with with, with you know. I with... think I think it does. I think it does. And when I mean, what do I mean by that? Is the understanding of what submission, the definition of submission to the male species. Um, in his own relationship, where um, submission ha- appears to be a, a problem, um, I think it's a function of his definition or understanding of what submission is, right? And so um, if, his, if his understanding or definition of submission is you have no say, my say is it, it's the highway or my way or the highway, like literally you're subservient to... To me, you know, I have the final say. Um, I think that's probably where I would say uh, that sort of mentality. Um, in, in that context, you know, um, submission is very, very a significant part. It has a significant part to play in um, the spark leaving a relationship. However, if we have um, a relationship where the, you know, the, the submission, the definition of submission means we are partners, and you've got to respect my view as much as I respect your views. Um, consideration will be given. Um, no one has higher say than the other. Um, we're going to be matured adults and reason things out together and make decisions together. Then, you know, um, that shouldn't be a problem. So I think it is yes and no. Um, and just like I said, yes, in the context of where there's a misunderstanding of the definition of that submission. Okay. Any what I mean, do you agree to that? Or you can still... I just add something? Of course. I, 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 I don't want to over- overclock the issue of submission, but can I just say we women want to be loved unconditionally. We say it's unconditional love, but I, you you want to, but but we are not ready to give submission unconditionally. Mm. But we want to be loved unconditionally. Mm. It's, it's, it's a it's a give and it's a give and take thing. I understand I, I, I love that being point. Be, being in the partnership together. I understand us having a dialogue, coming to a compromise, but there will be instances when there's a decision to be made and you both have different opinions as to what to do regarding that issue. Mm. You, are both, you have sat down and you have talked and you have talked and you have talked and you have talked. He's still saying this and you are still saying that. Who says then goes? What do you as a woman then do? He came up in the seminar and mm. when I go to um, the uh, seminar said, it was a big argument in the house, and they were at loggerheads lo- 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 as to what to do. She, as the woman, gave in. Okay, if you want us to do this, it's okay. Let's do it. And she and she stepped down, and they and they did what the husband wanted them to do. And after they had done it, he then realized it was the wrong decision that they should have gone to do what she wanted. He then came back to say, Oh, now I see what she was saying. Now I understand why he wanted us to do this because now they have done it his way and it did not work. He came back to us to apologize. If the other refuses to let go and you as the wife don't let go, there are many homes who are broken because of issues like that. Mm. In those instances, we as the woman should know. You have made your arguments, you have made your point. He's still insisting. What then 
do you do? What do you do? Sorry, sis. Um, can I, uh, any? Can I just say something, right? I hear that. <laughs> I hear that argument, and obviously the scenario you just painted it appears to be a best case scenario where perhaps the man is humble enough to revert. And, um, you know, retract, pardon me, saying, oh, actually, perhaps I should have listened to my wife and she had a better perspective on this. But where you have a man who is, uh, his ego would also not allow him to retract and, of course, set you and set you as a female and the family at a risk where his decision is so costly, costly enough to, um, uh, the, the, it beyond repair, you know, it, it has a very uh, uh, detrimental outcome if he does not, um, if he does not retract from it because of his ego. How do you then balance that situation? You know, perhaps you have to go and pray about it, I guess, isn't it? To to let God minister to him, and if God now doesn't minister to him, and he, or God even minister to him, and he, again his ego is in the way because it's not. He, he, uh, this is assuming that that's even a man that knows God. Right, that can even hear the 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 the, the, um, the voice of God. The man that does not even know God, um, where the woman is actually maybe the believer. Again, he goes and make a decision that would be very detrimental to the to, to the family. You just take it as it is because it's the head, right? Okay, you know, I, I think I think maybe this 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 issue we've I mean, opened a can of worms here. I think maybe we, we're going to have to address it uh, on a later date. But I do understand. On both, um, you know, on, on both sides, where where we are saying submission is good. Yes, it's good to love your wife. It's good to su be submissive to your husband. But you know, we have to, you know, also put a bit a pinch of salt in there. If it's an abusive relationship, you don't want to continue, uh, you know, kind of like support. Double nine. Yeah. Double nine. I, w I was going to just say that for me, that submission is compromise. It's, it means compromise. And that's why I said it all boils down to definition of what we think um, submission is. That, oh, maybe you're, the, you know, you're in, in Nigeria, they say mumu, like you're the dum-dum. You just have to say, that's not what submission is. Personally, my, my perspective is submission is compromise, and the compromise can come from either party. And that could, if you love me enough, and you think, okay, this woman is making a valid point. Let me compromise and let's see how her way would go. That's if you love me enough, right, um, to compromise. So I think it, it, for me, it's something that is interchangeable for um, the word compromise. That's submission. The woman should compromise and leave allowances is what the Bible is saying. But in the place of love, love also makes those kind of allowances for you as well. Love equally forgives love equally does not keep record love equally does not. so I, I, for me i feel like you know again not to delve too much on theology god's asking both the male and the female to do one and the same thing but in a different way it's the same thing if you love your wife you will be able to do anything for the woman. And if you submit to this man, this man will be able to do anything for you, likewise. And so um, not to overflog, like um, any has said, the, this issue of submission, because it will indeed open a can of worms and different people have different perspectives on this. Um, you know, we might want to have a session on theology one day uh, uh, <laughs> where we spend a bit more time cross-referencing the scriptures um, to support our our perspective, uh, you know, can on I, this matter. Double nine. Can I can I give an example? Okay, can I give an, a, a, an example of what happened to me? Yes. I, am, am I allowed of to share this? Um, this. Mm. Um, what, when I had my son, I was working in the school that was back in Nigeria. I was I was working in a school that did not have a nurse, a a a, a, a crutch. So my school was at Alaka, and I and I found a crate for him in Adenino Gosoya. So I would drop him there in the morning, go to school. Because I was doing breastfeeding ex exclusively, I would go during lunch time to express and feed him and then come back to school. After a while, my husband said, you know what, you have to, this cannot be happening. You have to stay home and stop working until this boy is old enough to start school. So that was me leaving my job and stay home because of my son, until he was old enough to start nursery. 
Okay. And I felt I have never, I'm not the kind of person who, who, who can be idle. I have never done it before. Since I've left school, I've been working also. When I stay home, we had, we had, we had an argument and I, we talked about, he still insisted. So I just prayed, God, what should I do? So I called his older sister. I said, Auntie, this is what I've been asked to do. This is the issue we are facing now. He wasn't to stop working and stay home until my son was three and start nursing and I can go back to work. I can't. What can I do? Thank God for the spirit of God inside us. He said, look for another school that has a crutch. So he can be with you in the school. If you have that option, maybe he will reconsider. So I began to look for another school. The school I found that had a crutch didn't pay me as much as where I was. But because I needed to submit, see, I could have said no. I would have a big fight and I would want something big and massive. But in my, I submitted in my own way. Mm. I went to another school, got a lower salary, but my son was with me. We would go to school together in the morning, go back home together in the evening. That was the way I resolved that issue. That was me submitting. So you compromise, which I is compromise. exactly what I just said. It's about compromises yes. and it doesn't necessarily have to be one way it could be the other way and i'll give an example my husband went to dubai to work for you know the agreement was it was meant to be for a year and they started going longer than a year and everything and i'm like bro we said one year you know and i understand it's still going on longer they want you to be there and everything like that but i need you to come home I can't do this anymore. It's a lot on me with the kids, trying to work, trying to, you know, travel. I, I travel to Nigeria every month. It's a lot. I have to, even my business was beginning to suffer as well. And I said, look, we agreed a month, I mean, a year, but you're not going, but I understand. And he was like, okay. And this is perhaps, uh, you know, a job that doesn't even require me to work, right? If he was, you know, him doing it, I don't need to work. At it. But there's compromise. And so for me, it's, it's, that's why I said submission and, I mean, submission, love, it's equally the same word for compromise. He loved me enough to understand that, okay, I did say a year, th- though this job is paying me a lot of money that, does, that does, does not require her to work, to be fair, she can sit at home and look after the kids, but he respected the fact that I've got a career too. He loved me enough to take into consideration my career, my business, my, my needs, and okay. compromise. So Fantastic. that's why I said it doesn't have to be a one-way thing. And submission is a function of perception. How we look at this word, quote unquote, submission. I think it is a fundamental problem in relationships because if we look at it as you have no say, one person has a final say than you are, then it's a challenge. And only one person has to be the person that must keep quiet and must swallow and must swallow. But no, I, it's, I mean, a, it's think, a compromise. I think, I think, and I think, both parties can. I think the way you just described it is a bit extreme um, about, you know, you, you keeping quiet and not having anything to say. I, I want to agree um, uh, with that uh, with that uh, point you just made. I understand, yes, it's good to have a bit of a dialogue uh, when you do have conversations on certain things. But, you know, my thing is, you know, I would say is, is, you know, maybe justify why you think this is the way it should go. You know, and also what level of compromise are you applying to this as well? That's very that's very important um, as well. You know, submission, I, again, I say it's, it's subjective. You know, we don't I'm not I wouldn't, you know, say or, or be and saying to people, um, you know, w- w- once you go into a relationship, you know, you know, sub- submit to them. Um, in a certain way and you have no say. No, I, I mean, for me, that's not my definition. I think you have to have a level of contribution in a, in a relationship and also still be able to have a dialogue uh, in that relationship to share your own thoughts uh, as well. But mm. yes, uh, still submit in a way because you mentioned something earlier, say, what, what is love? You know, I know you mentioned a very valid point that how do men interpret love? You know, it's very different to what a woman sees as love. Men see love as respect. You respect the man, he sees that, he sees that, you know, he sees that, why, yes, he loves me because he respects you, you know. And also, there's, there's not, I mean, if, if I even go into that respect again, it, that, that could open another kind, kind of world because of, of uh, we mentioned slightly where, an, you know, an example where uh, there was a lady who would uh, go on, on the knees and present food uh, to his or a man. There's nothing wrong with that. If that's a, a communication they've had and they've had a dialogue, 
and the woman is happy to uh, doing that. That's fine. You know, it, it, again, the, the, the woman sees that as she's getting what she wants from the man because he sees that as as, as respect and uh, sorry, he sees that as love. And she sees that as being respectful to the man and getting back what she wants. Again, going back to what Annie said as well, you have to have a level of compromise to have that give and take. Again, for me, yes, you do make a valid point. Submissiveness doesn't mean you're not, um, not having a say at all or not having any contribution uh, to a relationship. But I think you both make valid points. And I think we probably would need to uh, dive more into this discussion on on other note, but I want to go into but maybe things around challenges because we're looking at the pandemic now. This is where we are. Pandemic, uh, mm. you know, uh, if if we are in a relationship and there's no communication, could that lead to some form of abuse, which we touched on earlier? Because that leads to some emotional abuse, financial abuse, you know, physical abuse, even you know, as well. Um, you know, how do we avoid these challenges? You know, also we we, we think we look at things around distractions because. In the pandemic as, as well, because you're bored, you're not having communication with your partner. You know, I, I mean, I want to I bring this to you for me because, you know, we, we always have um, listeners on, you know, listeners on the show who send in um, questions and then put, and put a name uh, because obviously uh, the partner might be listening as well. And don't, they don't want that uh, getting out there because mm. you want to get about clarity. But when we talk about bad company, uh, for instance, the pandemic now mm. breeds a ground where outside influences can cause issues in a in a marriage or in a relationship where there's no communication. Absolutely, because if you're not communicating with your partner, you must be communicating elsewhere. And so um, whatever or whoever that elsewhere is, is very, very key. Um, you know, like I think uh, Amy mentioned earlier that she had to seek counsel from somebody else. And thankfully, that person was able to um, signpost her and give her uh, 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 sensible um, advice, right? And so, I- again, if we sit in the in the um, midst of scornful people, we're going to get terrible counsel. And so, it's important that um, you know, if you're not communicating with your spouse or you know whoever you're communicating with, let it be where you get. Um, you know, information or counsel that would soothe your marriage rather than aggravate it. So you, an example would be, um, you know, you tell your friend, ah, uh, my husband does not even cook. He did not help me. Do-. And the friend is like, what? Hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. I wouldn't take that crap. I cannot deal with that. He, he should, that's just rubbish. He shouldn't allow you. What This is what you need to do to him. And blah, 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 blah. And, you know, and then you go and practice what it is they've told, <laughs> told <you. laughs> what it is they've told you to go and do, and then it bl- boomerangs, it just blows up in your face. So, um, going back to your <laughs> your question, um, double nine is uh, you know external um, communication can that impact you know um, uh, relationship, especially in this lockdown, it, it definitely can. And so this is why we're bringing this topic to our listeners today to say that it is time to rekindle that spark. It's time to rekindle the passion once again where you don't have to go and speak to a third party. Your communication should not be outside in terms of your communication regarding your relationship anyways, should not be um, outside, but rather with your partner. So um, I suppose at some point before the end of the show, we're going to look at ways on how to encourage um, and promote um you know, to, to help these, you know, couples that are in, in, in that place where they don't communicate with themselves, um, rather they communicate with others. Fantastic. Okay, I want to bring Annie to this one as well, because I think this, this kind of like goes with a description around submissiveness. I'm not going into submissiveness again, but I'm just using that as a reference point where, you know, <laughs> things around uh, apologizing, you know, apologizing when you know you're on the wrong. And the reason I actually bring that back to you is because you mentioned about in your book that you can be communicating, but still wrong. So if you're not admitting that you're actually wrong on a certain issue because of your mental uh, makeup, you know, that could affect the level of passion in a relationship. Would you agree? Definitely, double nine, definitely. I think it's important that we learn how to say sorry. We learn how to say sorry. Many of us don't know how to say sorry, even when we're in the wrong. And we're the ones who are quick to tell our children to apologize when they do things that are wrong. We tell the children, 
say sorry, you apologize. But we as adults, to our spouses, we we don't know how to say sorry. Mm. I think when we are in the wrong, it's important that we go back and apologize. Go back and apologize. Anyhow you choose to say it, please say it. I have a friend who at the beginning of their marriage who writes a letter and put under the pillow for him. <laughs> Write a letter of apology and put under the pillow for it, and then he will pick and read it. And, and read it. That, that was how she learned at the beginning to, to, to say sorry mm. for, for doing something wrong. That was her own style. That those of us who will, will say it, I know men who, will, who, who in this modern day and age will still kneel down. That's the way they have chosen to do it. Find wow. a way, find a way to apologize, whether you are the man or you are you are the woman. I said during the seminar that it comes very easy for us women. But then somebody replied me straight away and said his wife has never apologized to him. And I was taken aback. I thought for, for us women, it's something we will do naturally. That, that, that comes really easy. It's men who I think their egos will stop them from apologizing to their wives even when they are wrong. But then I think I was too strong on that day. It's important that we are able to say sorry when we do things that make our spouses unhappy. Whether, whether it's a small thing or whether it's a big thing, that we learn to say sorry. And when we do apologize, can I say, it's much more important for us to forgive. Mm. And there's a saying that says forgiveness is, is, the, is the best form of love. It takes a strong person to say sorry, but an even stronger person to forgive. The mm. marriages of 20, 15, 30 years that have ended because one person refused to forgive the other, the other person. Okay. Let's mm-hmm. make allowances for our faults. Nobody is perfect. There's no perfect human being. Nobody is perfect. If God is able to forgive us, how much more? We we read it in the Lord's prayer when we read the Lord's prayer. Forgive us as we as we so, forgive others. It's important for us to keep that passion, to keep that spark burning. That we learn to apologize when we are wrong, and when we do apologize, the other person learns to forgive, and we don't go back to reminding them. Mm. Sorry, I was just, I was just going to even add on, actually, yeah. uh, Jenny, that. Aside, uh, you know, in, in addition to the fact that we should apologize when we are wrong, there are actually circumstances where you may not feel you are wrong, and I think we need to highlight this as well, because the, the partner has legitimately, um, you feel that partner has legitimately um, done something wrong and you said something terrible or what have you, but I think the, the, the key point here is if your partner has expressed their hurt to whatever you said or you've done, um, whether you think you were in the right or wrong, you know, um, you, I think we should be able to get to a place where we should apologize for it. We may not see it as a big deal. We may not see it as, oh, we've done something wrong. But if the other person has communicated that I am offended or I am hurt by this, on that premise is also we, we should learn to apologize regardless of our perspective on whether the person, whether what you did was right all wrong and um yes you're right you know because you find out how people always still recount you know you say you, you forget you know you, you you say sorry and everything but then you can bring up what happened two years ago and this is how you said it again three months ago and things like that we need to also get to a place where we should learn to um like you rightly said forgive and not recount you're right it's quite important I, mean, I, I just better say um uh, for me that what you just said now i do a lot with my husband <laughs> Mm. Even when he points out that I'm the one who has done the wrong thing, and and I still feel cross, and then I just go, just just beg me, just say sorry, just say sorry. <laughs> I mean, and, then, and then he asks me, say sorry for, say sorry for what? <laughs> I just say, just say sorry, just say sorry, and then he goes, okay, 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 sorry. He wants sorry, okay, sorry, and then he and he gives me hope, and then it, and then it ends there. Mm. It, and it, how, it, how we say the sorry is important as well. You know, some people will say sorry like you're throwing it on the table as sorry, you know. Um, there yeah. has to be that genuineness with it as well. Um, when we are genuinely sorry, we need to communicate that we are um, genuinely sorry um, uh, to our partner. But I was going to say, 
um, double nine because of time. Yes. You know, that it would be nice for us to just, again, list a few more um, ways that, you know, please we carry can re- reignite the spark. Um, what, you know, practical things we can do to help um, the, the spark or the, the passion return again. And we've gone beyond our, our usual time, which is 7.45. Um, but just on my part, anyway, one of the other couple of things um, would be to ask questions instead of assuming and everything. A lot of times, for, for me anyway, and I know some people fall in that category as well, we always, we're always quick to jump to conclusions and assume. We need to try, if we're going to rekindle or reignite anything, we need to come to a place where we ask questions more rather than assuming um, anything, no matter how small or big it is, because assumption um, definitely gets us into trouble. You know, oftentimes our assumptions are quite far off anyway from the reality as well. And again, you know, to pay attention to small moments, you know, not to um, just, you know, pay attention to little moments. Uh, It's easy to overlook things. I I know with the conversation that we had at some point yesterday about saying thank you in terms of appreciation for the little things, um, but I I, I had to reflect, I must confess on air, that, you know, when we were saying yesterday, I was like, why should you be appreciating something that the person should be doing in the first place Mm. and everything? But in the place of appreciation, um, it does leave room for uh, for it to happen again and again and again. You know, everybody wants a bit of thank you here and there and appreciation here and there. And um, have sex, you know, have sex. I can't overemphasize it. Have good sex, you know. Um, the, try to, even if the, the sex is not so great, try and see how you can communicate um, uh, uh, that, you know, you're not really enjoying it. You know, teach your partner do you know your body more and try and talk to your partner and, and navigate your partner as well, um, you know, through your body as well. Because where there's sex, there's an element of intimacy. It brings an opportunity for you to dialogue as well, especially if you're not one of those ones yeah, that so kind of, of knock course. off the just, after the just sex. To, just to give you a quick... Um, pro- and, yes, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Time yeah. with each other, no, no, no. Nice, be intentional about spending so, time with you. I mean, sorry for me. Us that, sorry for, um, for, for, for free. me. For me. And everything, but even with the, in this working from home, you'll be some in the meeting back to back. I'm on She's Zoom, just... I'm on this, I'm on that. Please try and take time and be intentional about you spending time um, with your partner. I think I'll leave the floor to um, any to add a few more things to it because I'm just conscious of time. Can I, can I add as well? Eating together, even if you don't eat out, eating together in the house. Oh, eating okay. just at the table. Yeah. Try, try as much as you do that as much as your schedule permits. It, it may not be breakfast or lunch. Maybe, may, maybe dinner once in a while. Well, at, at the office of our marriage, that was what I used to do. I, 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 because it was us alone for a long time before I started before I conceived. So it was just the two of us. So I, 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 I wouldn't eat without him. And unless he comes back from work, I wouldn't eat. I would, no matter how long it takes. That was me then. Hmm. I think, I think that that sort of built a bond. And 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 he knew, and he was always hurried back. Even when he had meetings, I had to go because I know she would not eat until I get back home. Mm. And, and that was at the beginning of our marriage. I think let let uh, cultivate the habit of eating together as much as our schedule permits us to do that. And mm. also let's check in on each other during the day. There are couples mm. who don't who once you clock out in the morning and you say bye bye, or if you come back home at nine or at ten. It's you, pandemic. You're not going yeah, anywhere. Man. At all during the day, check check on each other. A, a a quick WhatsApp message, a quick a quick phone call in between your meetings, mm. in your busy schedule. Just check on her or check on him. How how has the day been? So far, how did, how is it? How is that? Just check on each other during the day. I think it's important. On the on the issue of appreciation, I think I I want to say as well because I, I there was a young couple I uh, I, I counselled at the onset of, of their marriage, and I think it is um, sex. Is, the men expect us to give our bodies to them in sex when we make love. And I think it will make your wife really happy to appreciate her once, once you are done. Thank you, my dear. I really enjoyed that. Thank you for I even... Enjoyed it. It. I don't understand, though. enjoy it. Say thank you for even for her even giving, giving her body to you. So, appreciation in those little things. It, it may not mean... But what is the man that is giving his body to the woman? You know what? I don't either want way, to go either way, either way, either way. Whether the man or the woman, either way, say thank you. Let's learn to appreciate each other. Even when we make love, let's learn to appreciate each that's, that's the point yeah. I mean. Lady, that was good. Let's, yes, my dear, thank you. Baby, that was good. Oh, my daughter, that was that was good. The next morning, send him a message. Ah, thank you, my dear. Last night was... Mm, just send some... 
that would make him uh, make make her happy. <laughs> I think one last thing, though, double nine, if you don't mind. Um, no, it's is, fine. I, I was it's actually such wait. a big part that yes. we should have touched on earlier on, and you know, a majority of us. You know, I, well, I would say majority, especially for couples that are raising kids, where passion seems to have disappeared. Mm. Now that our we're on lockdown and our kids are studying from home, let's understand that these children are equally now in the school of life, not just academic alone. They're actually watching us. We are the institution that they are in where they're studying, and so it's important the the lessons that we're showing to these kids. If we are showing lack of passion or lack Lack of love, lack of intimacy, and all of these things that we've listed that we need to work on. If it's absent, invariably we are passing on the baton to these children. And again, what we've talked at the beginning of the show, where how can you give what you don't have? You can only give what you have. And these kids are going to end up, you know, inheriting these things from us and passing it on to next generation and their partners will be the one who have to deal with it. So we just have to be intentional and, you know, acknowledge the fact that we are now teaching our children not just math and English alone, but really life as a whole. Amazing, amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, the time is far spent. You know, I want to say a big thank you to our co-host uh, on the show today. That's Fumi and Any. Amazing. I really had a great time on the show. But uh, also, I just want to give out the... Um, because we know it's the pandemic, uh, as we mentioned as well, we're looking at, you know, reigniting the passion within this tough times we are now. And I know sometimes individuals, you know, do undergo some some soul some abuse and sometimes don't have the help uh, they need. Uh, so, I mean, you can reach out to the, you know, uh, domestic abuse helplines or call out the um, 999 if you are suffering any kind of uh, uh, domestic abuse or any form of abuse at all. Uh, the number I have here is domestic abuse helpline is 0808. 2,000-247. That's 0808-2,000-247. Um, if you're suffering any form of, of domestic abuse, uh, you can reach out to them as well. And for men, men also do go through some form of abuse as well. Or you need someone to talk to. Uh, you know, the people are always willing to have a conversation with you because men, we always have this macho uh, mentality that we can handle everything. But we do need help sometimes as well. So you can reach out to people uh, the number is 0808-801-0327. That's 0808-801-0327. If you're going through any kind of challenges, there's someone on the other side of that line to have a conversation with you. Man, ladies and gentlemen, it's been amazing. It's been great. It's the was It has been the first show. The first expression on, the, on Canada Expression Sunday with our fantastic relationship consultant, Fumi! And our guest host, Any. I want to say a big thank you to both of you. But before you go, Any, you have any final words you want to share to our listeners? I, I just want to... Um, um, I, I, I came across this quote and I just want to share it. That it is not the lack of love that makes my ears unhappy, but the lack of friendship. Mm. And mm. so it's important that you cultivate for those who are not married yet, before you go into it, make sure you are friends with whoever you are friends. Many of us who have friends, we talk to them every day. Some who are close friends, we talk to them every day. If you have, there is always something to talk about with your friend. So if your friend then becomes your husband or becomes your wife, then you have a solid marriage. If you marry somebody who is not your friend, then there will be issues. So it's mm. important that you cultivate strong friendships. Okay, fantastic. Before you go into, the, into that union. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And, and that's the boss down to having that communication going with that relationship as well. It's very, very vital. For me, any words for my relationship consultant? The amazing for me before we say goodnight to our listeners this evening. Uh, double nine, it is really just to let everyone make an effort. However, there is the sad reality that some passion may just be dead like literally beyond resuscitation um but please do try and exhaust all avenue to resuscitate however where it is not able to be resuscitated and of course some level of um, abuse um you know is born as a result of it please do get help you know double nine has actually given 
shared resources of where we can get help from because there are some that's beyond um, reignition, to be fair. And, you know, knowing when you are at that place, um, especially where your health is possibly compromised in any way, do get help and, um, yeah, get out. Fantastic. I want to say a big thank you uh, to for our host uh, today as well, co-host today as well. It's been amazing. It's been great. And a big thank you to everyone who's tuned in and sent in messages. Stay locked on, stay locked. I'm going to give you some vibes. Probably say goodnight this evening. But to our co-host, it's been amazing. It's been great. I've had such a great time. And again, I wish you a happy new year and a great successful one indeed.